So we're going to just do a quick run through about what Unreal is doing uh, more in the casual space and a little bit of a glimpse into how that crosses over as casual grows into things that become a little bit more core. Um, we get a lot of people all the time who don't realize that you can use UE4 for making more casual games. So we're going to talk about a few of the things. Uh, on, it says Unreal Engine versus Unity, but we're really just going to highlight the things that Unreal Engine does so that you can understand how to make casual games or even more core games within the Unreal Engine. And topics we're going to discuss today are Epic makes games, Unity does not, the Unreal Engine in the past and in the present, UE4 as being a complete tool set, less reliant on the marketplace than Unity is, meaning that everything's all in one, blueprints, C++ versus C Sharp, the flexibility of the engine, the fact that you get full source code for free with the engine, it's free to develop, and we have custom licensing options should you want to do things uh, at a different pay rate. So as I was saying, Epic makes games. Uh, we're branched out into two parts of our business. We have the games engine side and we have game studios still. And these are six of the games that we have coming out within the course of about a 12 month period. Paragon is our MOBA that's still in early access. Robo Recall uh, was designed here in Bellevue. Uh, Oculus uh, VR game. Fortnite just came out about a week ago. Unreal Tournament will come out later this year, fully updated. Battle Breakers and Spy Jinx are our first two mobile games to come out since Infinity Blade. Uh, Spy Jinx is in collaboration with J.J. Abrams and Bad Robot. So in the early days of Unreal Engine, AAA was the standard target. We weren't really looking at mobile. We weren't really looking at casual. It was best for the high-end PCs and consoles, not for web, not for mobile, not for VR. It was made for shooters as we were making a shooter, Gears of War. We also had Unreal Tournament. It was complex and it was very expensive. It wasn't made for indie developers. Today, however, many indie devs use Unreal Engine, as you can see from here. Player Unknown Battlegrounds is in UE4. Rocket League is in UE4. Uh, you'll see some examples of mobile on UE4 as well. So multi-genre frameworks, free samples for you to get started and use, easy to learn, easy to master, customizable due to the fact that you get free source code, which you do not get with Unity. Free and custom licensing options, meaning that you can start building for free. There are no per seat licenses. There are no monthly costs of it. You don't pay for anything until you start making money after you release your game. We're also an enterprise leader in the space, working with companies such as Disney. Uh, we're talking to gentlemen somewhere out there. Uh, DreamWorks, a lot of the film companies that are out there. Many of the automotive companies, Volkswagen, Tesla, et cetera, uh, doing things that you wouldn't normally associate with a game engine uh, that are driving into other industries outside of games. As I mentioned, UE4 is a complete tool set. It comes with everything you need to start and build your games. You can build without paying for additional plugins, as you would in the Unity store. Uh, and you can also customize it as needed. So the reason that a lot of times people associate uh, the engine as being bigger or heavier than what you get with Unity is because it is more full-featured. It has many of the things that you would buy on the marketplace already built into the engine itself. We do also have a marketplace where you can buy additional tools and additional assets if you'd like, but it's not necessary. The editors are all built in for UI, materials, animations, particles, the scripting system, state machines, et cetera, and all of your starter content. You literally could turn it on, pick a pack of starter content, have a game up and running in about five minutes. We also have a visual scripting language called Blueprints. This is an example of what Blueprints look like. So basically, it is all node-based. You don't need to know any C++ if you don't want to. You just drag and drop. There's uh, pull-down menus for the different things that you'd want to do, and you can build a complete game there. Uh, a game that we built completely in, in uh, Blueprints is Robo Recall. So if any of you have the Oculus, uh, I believe you, can, you will be able to get it on the Vive eventually, but you can download that. We also allow you to download all of the source code for Robo Recall so you can pull it apart and use any of those assets as, as you'd like uh, to build your own VR game or to see how we did things under the hood. So Blueprints allow coders to deal with the big issues and allows you to do things by uh, coder, without having so many coders. You can have the game designers actually make the blueprints, actually do the things that they want to, 
and not need as many coders. There are instances where you may need a coder, and in that instance, you, the game developer, the game designer can show everything that they've been doing. A coder can then come in and actually implement the C++. So these blueprints actually are C++ under the hood, but they have a nice UI and an easy way for you to start designing on your own. They can be nativized. They can be converted to C++ as well. Uh, and we do recommend in the end that if you're doing your prototyping this way but you want a little bit more of a performance jump, that you do move, move over to C++ for native. And as I mentioned, Robo Recall was completely designed this way. So C++ is integrated within the UE editor. Classes created in C++ can be subclassed and are instantiated by the editor. And I'm going to just kind of say these things because I'm not the technical person, but hopefully some of you out there will, there will understand this. And artists and designers can extend into blueprints, which will convert to C++ on their own. Code at a high level, UE4 handles the hard stuff and removes many of the pain points of C++. So again, coming out of the high end, I wanted to give you some examples of what uh, we are doing in UE4 for games that fit more of the casual market and as casual grows into things that are more high end on the graphical side. Uh, this is a game called The Siege in the Sand Fox, and unfortunately I pulled this late last night. We don't have sound on it, but I'm going to give you an example of what UE4 can do in a side-scrolling game. So you can see this would not be the high visual target that you might see in uh, AAA console games, but it allows you to do everything that you would see in a Unity-based game, side-scroller. You can use any type of art that you want to, again, relying heavily on blueprints. And as we look into mobile, I mentioned we've got two mobile games coming out ourselves, but some other games that have been uh, using UE4 for mobile, Robot Unicorn Attack Forever game, uh, Solitarica, which is one of my favorite games out right now. It's like a battle-based solitaire. Be Brave, Oceanhorn 2, and I'll show a little sample here as well. That gives you a pretty good idea of where we're pushing mobile for the casual side. As we look also forward in mobile, we have uh, some amazing things that people are doing coming out of Asia. So games like Lineage, uh, for instance.
And that's where the engine's moving in terms of graphical fidelity on mobile. Uh, currently, we have version 4.17 of the engine that's out and live. Version 4.18, which is going to be coming out around October, is going to really allow you to, to leverage more of mobile. Uh, it's going to have all the things that we're putting in it for the mobile games that we are building, and it will be a huge improvement over the current state of the engine. In addition to building in the engine, we do take care of our community, so we're very much committed to what the community is doing. We often showcase many of the community projects, uh, as well as student projects. This was a photogrammetry project that students were doing that we feature through all of our social channels, on our websites, we have our own Twitch stream, et cetera, uh, and we're always looking to see more and more projects that are coming out of our community. In addition to that, we also do development grants. Uh, we give away about every quarter a certain amount of money for projects that are at a stage I would say past the prototype. The money's not meant to be used for prototyping, but we always like to see what cool things people are doing in the engine. Uh, if you're making something and you want to apply for the grant, it's easy to do so online, and we give money away anywhere from about $3,000 to $50,000 per grant. And as I was mentioning, the flexibility of UE4, making things with blueprints. So for those of you who have not seen what Robo Recall looks like and what a game is that can be made completely with blueprints, I will show you a video of that. You can press on, shoot these robots this way like that. Throwing the gun, grabbing the gun. Seeing parts go flying everywhere, that's very exciting. It allows you to interact with the world in ways that we've never been able to do before in games. Pick one of them up, throw them in the air, and then just everything explodes, you know. <laughs> Robo Recall feels like a classic arcade game in a way that it's a very accessible experience. It's the type of thing that you can jump into and have a great time in you know, five, 10 minutes if you got it, or you can stay and you can play the whole day. Exciting, bright, high intensity. Fast paced, arcadey, score driven experience. So the goal is to make it still fun and still colorful to be in this environment and actually punch at those robots in a fun way and in the most creative way to destroy them. We want you to always be kind of improvising and thinking about different ways you can manipulate the robots or use your weapons in creative ways or use the environment in creative ways. The great thing about VR is that you're actually there. You know, you're inside of this world that we've created for you. When these robots are running at you, it really feels like they're you know, six feet in front of your face and kind of fending them off and grabbing them and tearing their heads off is a really exciting and kind of visceral experience. How to do that was actually to make you in a position where you have actually a lot of people coming at you and then coming from every direction. So you want to make sure the player has actually a lot of power, like great gun and great weapon to actually deal with that many uh, robots. Allowing the player to go wherever they want in the space, quickly jump to that space facing whatever direction they need based on their combat that they've assessed for that area, gives the player a lot of freedom and a lot of tactical choices. You can feel like a superhero, you can feel like an action movie character, you can grab the weapons at your hips and throw them at people, or you can reach out and grab a robot and tear its head off. Find the most creative way to destroy those robots and do your job as well as you can. As I mentioned, we also give you full source code free of charge. Uh, if you are coming in through uh, unrealengine.com and you want to develop for free, you would pull your source code right off of GitHub. Uh, if you come in as a custom licensee, we put you into our Perforce account. You get all of your new versions of the engine through there. And then we have different levels of how we keep you uh, supported. So we have community support in the same way that Unity does. In our custom licensing program, we have more closed level support. And as I mentioned, it's free to develop with UE4. All you need to do is download the engine, sign our EULA, which is a click-through, and you're getting started. As I mentioned, community-based support. Uh, additional code is available as long as you're an approved developer for PS4, Xbox One, Switch, uh, as well as being registered developers on any of the mobile platforms. Uh, you pay nothing until you start making money. So our, our arrangement is that the first $3,000 per quarter of revenue are royalty-free. That resets every quarter. And then after that, it's 5% of the gross. If you are a custom licensee, then we make custom terms uh, where there, it involves an upfront payment and then a lower royalty rate on the back end. Covered that already as well.
Uh, here's my information in case anybody wants to get a hold of me. Okay, well, David, I have a quick question. Sure. Um, so if um, I was a game designer who had a sort of a casual use game and I wanted to project it to, you know, a team play competition um, level game, uh, what unique features do you see um, in those games and how can um, UE4 help develop those? I mean, we have uh, built-in networking as part of the engine itself. So a lot of the, the challenges that you would have in those things, we're about, we've already got built into the engine. Uh, our, all of our games that are coming out in the future are all multiplayer, all networked, all free-to-play games. So all of it is built into the engine. You don't have to go find the different plugins that will work for you. It's all there already. Fantastic. All right. Thank you very much. Okay.